Hello everyone, welcome to my review and to all 1cc of Zero Ranger. This is one of my favorite indie shmups, if not my favorite indie shmup ever made. This is a game that I've been talking about ever since it was first released. So it's funny it's taken me this long to create an official review type video for this game. But I think it was because when initially it came out, I was more focusing on the podcast side of things. And now that I'm also transitioning to doing more videos, I was just waiting for the right opportunity. And with the recent update and with the recent addition of the scoring new scoring mode that was a few months ago, I think right now is the perfect time to revisit Zero Ranger, talk about why it's awesome, talk about why if you don't own it, you should own it, and you should recommend it to your friends for sure. And one thing I do also want to just mention is that when this game was first released, I did an interview with the developers that I'm really proud of. I think it's still my most popular podcast episode. It talks all about the development history of the game. I feel pretty proud of how deep we went into that and how much information the developers shared about the process of putting this game together, which is definitely fascinating in its own right. And I remember I looked on the Wikipedia development history for the game, and about half the references for its development history do come from that interview, which is pretty cool. So definitely check it out if you are interested in listening to the podcast. Anyway, so over the new changes, the new updates. So the first one is that there is a new scoring mode called White Vanilla. I did cover this a little bit when it first came out, just showing the gameplay. I think I may have done commentary on it. And also I remember Jamers doing some insane runs of the mode. It's a lot of fun. It's pretty interesting to cr try and uh, describe. It's like a remix version of the arcade mode, but condensed down into kind of this caravan style. The faster you kill things, the faster it speeds up. So you almost can kind of speed run it too. And then at the end of the stage, you are ranked on your achievements as far as how fast you were, how many enemies you killed. The chaining system is kind of thrown out the window. That always takes me a little bit to get used to because I'm playing like my old chaining routes in some of the sections. It's like, well, you don't have to do that. You got to get in there and get killing people. Absolutely a lot of fun and keep an eye out because maybe it'll be making an appearance at Shmup Slam 3 with a really cool run that I think will be worth checking out. And also, if you want to learn more about the mode, there's my video of my coverage, and also I'll link Jamer's awesome playthrough of it. The other addition to Zero Rangers since its release that I think is really cool, that might not be as noticeable for people who don't play the game as much, is that there's been an update to the arcade mode, which is what you're seeing now, where it has been, I think, increased the difficulty. Definitely a lot, some of the patterns, especially in the second loop, are more difficult. And also, it feels to me like the bolt speeds are a little bit quicker, and some of the boss seem to live longer it's a little bit hard to tell but it felt like especially the last boss fight which will be a really fun part of this video yeah that was a hell of a scramble and it felt like that boss was much more aggressive and brutal than it was in the past but maybe that's just my memory playing tricks on me but before we get into all that let's talk about zero ranger itself talking about why i feel this game is so special and why i feel it's so interesting so the first thing that always comes to my mind about Zero Ranger that in my brain sets it apart from a lot of the other shmups in the genre, there are a few other games that kind of are like this as well, but I think Zero Ranger is the most like it, is that this game has an insane potential for crossover with the mainstream non-shmup audience in a way that I don't think other shmups quite do, both in terms of its presentation, in terms of its sort of like storytelling elements, which are really unique, and also, of course, the way the gameplay works, which is also very unique and interesting and I think very accessible for people who aren't into shmups. And I remember when I was interviewing the developer, they were talking about they weren't just looking to the usual shmup suspects of getting feedback on the game. They were also sort of talking to their normie friends and having their normie friends give feedback and criticism to try and get that crossover just right. And I think they really, really nailed it. That's one reason why earlier this year I submitted uh, Zero Ranger to GDQ. Not only because I love the game and it'd be fun to play it for a bigger audience, but I also felt like it is one of those shmups that, you know, people who aren't normally into the genre, if they got their eyes on it, they'd immediately say, oh, this is interesting. I want to check this out. It could hook people in, bring people in, in a way that I think a lot of shmups don't seem to be able to do, even the more popular ones like Ikaruga. What ends up happening is people think Ikaruga is cool, but a lot of people don't really seem to move on from there and enjoy the genre in general, at least that's been some of my observations. But anyway, another really cool thing about Zero Ranger is just talking about the presentation and style. I think the obvious comparison that comes to mind for people 
is the Undertale comparison. In fact, I was going to name this video Zero Ranger the Undertale of Shmups, and I swear that was my own thoughts there. I was like, that's the perfect description, it's perfect tagline, perfect YouTube, everything. And there is some other dude who made that video in that title. I haven't watched the video out of pure saltiness, but uh, yeah, damn it. I would have loved to title this video that because I think that's the perfect comparison and perfect description. Especially not only because they visually look alike, which is obvious, but also sort of the way they appeal to people outside of the regular genre is also very, very similar with each other. I remember, for instance, when Undertale came out, I played Undertale and all my friends played Undertale. I don't play RPGs, so if that RPG got me to play it, that means it had that crossover potential with people who don't normally play. I think Zero Ranger fits that bill exactly, so that's one reason why I'm so enthusiastic about this game and why I hold it in such high regard. Another reason why Zero Ranger is just amazing is even though it is very... you can tell it pays homage to a lot of other shmups in the way it plays and the way it feels, it is so uniquely put together that there's no game quite like it as far as other shmups so basically if you're playing zero ranger and you're loving it and you want more of it there isn't really another shmup you can turn to and get that exact same vibe because it has so many different elements and you'll see right here on the description or right in here on the replay here where i'm using the sword you got all these different weapons you got the sword you got the back thruster you got your regular shot and also the way the game is always kind of moving and changing up where now I'm scrolling sideways and then the next stage you're doing all these different things. It's just like if you put all these shmup elements in a blender and you blended them together, but in the most perfect way and it came out, I don't know, a margarita or something, you know what I mean? That's how it feels to play this game where I can't quite find a game that quite scratches the itch the same way. I think maybe the closest comparison is maybe something like Radiant Silver Gun, I guess. That I think that was the only other shmup that when I was playing it, I was like, oh, okay, this I can see where Zero Ranger got some inspiration, not only with the sword mechanic, but also kind of the multiple weapons and sort of the game feel of that. So that might be the closest feeling game to Zero Ranger that I can think of is Radiant Silver Gun, which is funny because I think as much as people love Ikaruga, I've always felt like Silver Gun is the more interesting, fun game, at least for me. But anyway, another thing about Zero Ranger that really impresses me, and again, reminds me of Undertale, is that all the elements seem to be coming from, you know, these two dudes. The music, the visuals, the gameplay, and yet they all are so high quality. And they have that distinctive vibe and feel that's really hard to describe, where it feels indie, but it also feels masterfully put together in a way that you couldn't quite get in a larger studio right like you couldn't see a cave or someone quite like that putting out a game like this it's super hard to describe what i mean it feels very basically like you your friend who happens just to be a, a genius at video game development made this game and gave it to you that's it has this homey feel but also this polished work of brilliance and i think i'm really looking forward to what the developers are doing next. I saw they did a little uh, trailer for a new game they're putting together called Void. I'm going to have to look at the title. Void Stranger, is that right? And I don't think it's going to be a shmup, but I feel like, you know, in a roundabout way, that might be good for the genre because if they're able to make this Void Stranger game and it pops off with a larger mainstream audience, people might turn their, you know, might get more eyes on Zero Ranger and then that might become a thing. I don't know, it's hard to say, but. Anyway, I'm looking forward to trying it in any case. So this is on the main screen here on the left. This is stage three. I love this stage with the music. Um, probably my least favorite aspect of this stage is the train section coming up here but at, at the end of the stage. But Oh, you see it on the right there, the train section right there on the right. But other than that, I think this stage is really awesome. And my only issue with the train section and with any of this kind of harder sections of this game is not that the way they're made or anything it's just because zero ranger doesn't have a training mode which i would consider really the only big flaw of the game and it's something that could be fixed right they could add it in the future it does have a nice stage select and it does have a nice checkpoint system but for a game that has a chaining scoring system i always feel like a robust training mode is pretty much necessary or required because just to get those links polished up right and to get your route out your routing just right 
it just feels really frustrating to have to restart the stage, especially since if you do the stage select, it doesn't carry the rank that you'd normally have into it, which is also... So it makes it hard to really practice, kind of like Don Mokum Lift 3 actually it shares that same issue. Um, I think the only difference is that in a run at least, you can restart the stage over and over and it'll reset the rank. You, but you can't cold start with the correct amount of rank from the stage select, which I feel uh, feel like that could be adjusted and improved. But other than that, everything about this game I pretty much love. And it has a very cinematic feel. I wanted to point that out as well, the visual design. Not only the way the, the pixels and the art look, but also just look right here on the left, like where you're going up a spiraling tower and then you're fighting a train. And there's just a lot of splendor and cinematic quality to the visuals that make this game really stand out that I'm envious of for sure that, you know, I think it's going to be really hard for a lot of people to measure up to that, but it's something I think that's a great example to turn to. And of course, the one gameplay element that I must discuss that is my favorite aspect of Zero Ranger and I think will be the most influential aspect of Zero Ranger for the shmups in the future, which is the sword. So I've always thought about what if shmups had a solid sword mechanic and there have been many attempts of shmups in the past to put one together with, you know, soul divide. Uh, Psycho seems to be the most... Uh, obsessed with this concept if you look across their games there is a good amount of melee attacks and swords but i don't think any of them quite nail it zero ranger nails it and i think i was even sort of messing around in game maker prior to zero rangers release and I, my main goal was to kind of put together some kind of sword mechanic in a shmup and i kind of came to some similar ideas with what they did here but the big difference was the whole when you're swiping the sword how it kind of holds the bullet back like, it slows the bullet down, but it doesn't completely deflect it away. That was the magic ingredient. And what I remember from the interview, um, they were mentioning that I believe that was sort of a happy accident that they came across that that design, where I think initially, and I'll have to go back and re-listen to the interview to make sure this is correct, but I think, if I remember correctly, initially they were going to have it like what I was thinking, where you swing the sword and it like reflects the bullets away, you know, and you have to like time it like tennis game or something like that what you do in this fight right here on the left but, but instead because of the way he programmed it it slowed the bullet down but didn't swipe it away and he realized oh wait this is this is the way to go but yeah the sword mechanic I can see that carrying over into shmups in the future because I think just the way it's done the way it works is so perfectly implemented to the point that there's also a drill right so there's different weapon systems I forgot to mention that I just always play my favorite weapon loadout, which is the Spy Hunter back thrust. You know, it's like the flamethrower in the back. And then my second favorite is the uh, Ray Force style locking on. You can see the, on the left here, the guy's doing it. The Ray Force style lock on bullets. And then the sword. That's the way I play the game. But the alternatives are is like a Hadoken charge attack instead of the back thruster. Or I can't remember the alternate weapons. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna lie. Because I don't really use them all that much, but I know the alternate to the sword is a drill. And I remember um, mentioning, uh, hearing mention that the drill might actually be better for the from than the sword in a sort of like gameplay sense or whatever. But for me, it's like it's all about the sword. If you're not playing the sword, it, it, is it really playing Zero Ranger? At least that's for me. Definitely my favorite weapon by far. And looking here on the right, this mid boss fight is absolutely brutal one of the hardest ones and it's kind of an interesting what's really great about this game when it comes to the boss fights not only are they well made but because you have all these different weapons there's a lot of ways you could kind of approach it and that that fight's a really good example of it here where you could try and kind of get at them with the sword or you can do what i'm doing here and just shoot them with your default shot which is surprisingly effective or you can try and be evasive and target them with the the ray force tracking shot or if you have the different weapons, I'm sure blasting them with the Hadoken is probably the way to go. But it's just really cool how many different elements there are to this game and the, the way the gameplay works and everything like that. Another thing that I'm not going to show in the video, because I remember the developers are a little bit more protective of this, is this game is full of a ton of really fun little Easter eggs and hidden gems and hidden... hidden. I can't really describe it without giving it away, but like hidden moments that you're not going to see in the arcade 
stuff. If you try different things, you can get little secret hidden things. So that's really unique about Zero Ranger. What's also really unique is it seems to have this deep-ish story or some kind of intricate story going on. Um, my lack of knowledge of it is not the game's fault. I just cannot be bothered with video game stories. It's just a condition of mine. I'm seeing a doctor, I'm getting prescriptions, but it's nothing seems to be working. I still can't seem to bother with them, but I do know just based on what I've been seeing on Steam and what I've been seeing, I think there's like a Reddit dedicated to the story of the game and people talking about the game's story, like people are into it. So I think that's also really cool. And again, another reason why you can kind of compare it to Undertale, right? It has that same sort of devotion. Now, I'm sure Undertale's story devotion is on a whole nother level. I don't need, I played the game, didn't read any text, and I still kind of know the story just from fan sources. It's so popular, but still, I think there's a lot going on with Zero Ranger, too, that people seem to be really enjoying. So on the left here, we got to talk about these, this final boss fight here. So this is the pre-boss before the boss. I need to figure out a sh official shmup term for that. The pre-boss, I guess. Um, I kind of messed it up. I came into the fight with a good amount of resources. And right here, the strategy, I'm going to help you all out, is to absorb. So how you do this, I'm just going to tell you because it's going to save everyone a lot of headache in the future. So the first, he shoots these pearls, right? And you have to speed kill the pearls. And they, they increase. So when the one, you just kill it with the sword. When it's the two, you kill it with the ray force shot. When it's the three, you kill them with the sword again when they spawn. And then when it does the five, what you do is you fly up there, you absorb them, and then you suicide basically and die. And if you don't get them all absorbed, you have to quickly kill the remaining ones. Otherwise, it'll keep looping and you have to try and keep speed killing it. I'm just explaining that to you because this that was a huge hurdle for me between getting my two all for a long time until I really sat down and studied how to do it. But anyway, check out this boss fight. You can see all the fun little inspirations. So the hand attack from Esperate, of course. Uh, more mild than the Esperate hand attack, but I think also more fun to try and dodge. This attack gets me every time. I don't know what the wheel of hell I'm going to call it. Um, again, see, if this game had a little bit of a better training mode where you could at least boss select, I feel like my performance on the final boss would be better. But really, you have to kind of go through the whole stage each time in my... So my number of... I have fought the boss a good amount of times, but not enough to really, really know the patterns deep in my heart. And so this this fight gets a little bit dicey. The The real key is you just got to get her down to the final phase, and then usually you, I can get through the final phase without getting hit any problem. But yeah, this, this sword attack here... I just also, too, the way the bullets look, the the vibe, the music, everything about this game just feels so epic and cool. Um, you get def If you haven't played Zero Ranger and you have not gotten this far in the game, you gotta do it. I, so these chain deaths really annoyed me because I literally died twice because I couldn't find my stupid ship on the screen. I just couldn't find him. <laughs> he blended into those crosses a little too hard, so that's why I took those chain deaths. I think I did I mention that there are no bombs in Zero Ranger. So you gotta straight up kill everything. You can kind of fudge things a bit with the mech attack with a lot of boss fights, but on the final boss, you just gotta nail it. Ooh, I came down. That was a really close call. That was hella close. And so then here we go, here we go, the final attack. All you gotta do is sort of avoid these wheels. Uh, not, not too bad. I think this is more like, basically, can you not screw up your input? Because it's much more lenient and easy than the, the early phase of the boss fight, but I could see nerves getting to someone to where you're accidentally landing on top of the the burn wheel or whatever the hell that is, the symbol at the end there. On the right, this boss fight's actually a lot of fun too. So what you do is when you fight him with the sword, you have to slash at his face. But if you slash at those marbles or pearls or whatever they are, they'll knock you down and crush you. Another interesting aspect about Zero Ranger that I want to mention is the way the damage system works in this game, where you have a little bit of armor against like physical contact. So if, if you ram into an enemy, you take damage, sort of, but you don't die instantly. Like if I was to fly up there and ram into those eyes, I wouldn't die. Instead, I'd bounce off them and kind of take damage. But if you take too much damage in a short amount of time, you die. 
So basically, if you ping pong off too much stuff or something too heavy crushes you, it's really cool. And I really wish more shmups would do this. Another thing I love about Zero Ranger is that you can't be killed by walls. Thank God, right? Because I hate, I hate walls and shmups. And I think since Zero Ranger is a vertical shmup, I could see, okay, well, vertical shmups don't normally have walls. Some, you can see them in some of them, but they usually don't have them. So I think a nice compromise was, okay, if you're going to put walls in a vertical shmup, at least make it so you don't die if you run into them. You can kind of rub up against them and stuff. I really like, stage two is where that comes into play a lot. So a little tip for you there for when you're playing stage two. This section here is really fun. Almost reminds me a little bit of like a Toho pattern or something. So the, the section you're seeing here on the left is the, the escape. And then on the right, is the boss rush at the end of uh, the first loop. Both sections are really fun, so I think it's a really cool way to be the finale of this review and uh, gameplay. This, I don't know if I hit this dodge or not. No, okay, that dodge is ridiculous. <laughs> but yeah, um, the last thing I want to talk about with Zero Ranger that are just some things to look forward to in the future, because I think there are at least, there is at least one more thing being added. At least from what I remember talking to the devs in my interview, with, which is a hard mode. So even though the arcade mode has been updated to be pretty challenging, I would say. I mean, it took me some real grinding to get this two wall, and I had already grinded for a two wall in the past. But yeah, a, a true hard mode would be really cool. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm kind of suspecting it'll be similar to the white vanilla sort of mode, where it'll be like a remix, but hard rather than just a remix at normal difficulty. That's my guess, I actually have no idea. Also another change is that you see the grading system. So the grading system is an update change. So the original, from what I recall anyway, the original uh, mode did not have a grading system at the end, but now it has a grading system. The one thing though is that with the update to the arcade mode, I feel like there needs to be a split in the score, in the score tracking. Because look, okay, for instance, here's my new score, which I considered a really solid run, especially on the right here, the last bit of the of the first loop, I really nailed it. My first bit of the first loop wasn't all that good, and my second loop was kind of okay-ish, scoring-wise. Obviously, survival-wise, it went really well. But yeah, I, I could see myself getting a million in this game, but I'm sort of holding off until I uh, can figure out some way to do save states or some way to kind of improve the training options but yeah that's what uh that's my review of zero ranger i absolutely recommend it i couldn't say enough good about it one of my favorite shmups i feel like it's an essential ownership of all shmup fans out there maybe someday we'll get a switch port i really don't care all that much personally as far as playing it on the switch because i i don't mind playing it on the pc but I just always kind of want that to happen because I could see it really making the game reach a bigger audience because you know a lot of those mainstream publications are going to snap it up once they get their hands on it because it's just it's just catnip. It's just waiting for the, the audience to understand it and find it. So thanks so much and let me end this video by thanking my patrons. So thank you to Dingo, Handicapped, Anthony A, Ben Wynn, Corio, Eric H, Full Set, Retro Shmupper, How Su, Kiwi, JB, RPG, Joe Angelo, Game Boy Guru, K, Malaise, Mark Tom, Mark Toms, Martin Worrell, Maz, Meher Kalendrian, Queen Charlene, Nathaniel Davis, and Electron, Okla Kugels, Raul, Smacky Factor, Sugumo, Plasmo, and Yutsukaya. Thanks for watching.